Right now we're going to talk about three tips for mastering your new year. And I have the infamous film producer, Suzanne Lyons with me. And if you've been under a rock, no problem. She's really <laughs> well known in the Hollywood industry for uh, some major independent films that have had stars like James Caan, Naomi Watts, Christopher Walken, Suzanne Sarandon, Susan Sarandon, Donald Sutherland. Um, I've worked on a couple of films with her, uh, one from our Vista and uh, another called Time Toys with uh, director Mark Rossman, who's known for Cinderella Story, among many other things too. Um, so thank you for joining me. You're welcome. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks, Jennifer, for having me. This is fun. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, every every time I talk to Suzanne, something uh, amazing happens to me. She's got this great energy and it, it just leaks off on you. And then all of a sudden just magic s starts happening. So whenever I can, I'm always pulling her aside and seeing if I can just get some more advice or just have her talk to me because something good is going to happen. Thank you. And <laughs> <laughs> and it, every year we seem to come together towards the end of the year and then it just makes my whole and at the beginning of the year and it makes my whole next year just so magical so we thought what better than to talk about her secret sauce to really setting up the, the year because Suzanne's somebody I know that's always completing something and then she's starting something anew and you know so many so many of us have all these projects and they're always just like kind of hanging in limbo and mm. or this script or that script or you know I'm going to put that on the shelf for a while so um she's got some great advice that I think will help all of us uh for the new year good oh well, thank you <clears throat> and it's funny because it, when Jennifer and I were talking about this what I was thinking is I've been teaching a class called launching the future for years literally since uh 1995 and I think that's what has had me kind of be successful in this way is I've kind of mastered the art as much as anybody can anyways of completion. It's not an easy thing to do completing. In mm -hmm. fact, we avoid it like the plague, you know, in our culture, in our society. Uh, because what happens is we kind of get complete is it brings up what's next. And for me, because I've worked on this and because I've taught this class so much and because I've worked on it personally myself, for myself, for my career and my personal life, I think what's happened is I've sort of mastered being complete. And I still don't find it easy. I don't know if any human being can um, because sometimes being safe and comfortable and kind of playing a bit small and um, you know, finding that security blanket, even if it's smelly, we get our little blanket out and go into that comfort zone. You know, there's something about being incomplete that's familiar and comfortable, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the more complete we get, you know, the better it is, but people are scared to jump in. It's kind of like jumping off a cliff in a way, right? It's or standing yeah. on the abyss. You know, it's like standing on the abyss. You know, it's kind of the unknown. But once you actually get complete, then there's room for amazing things to happen because then you can create a bigger picture. And what it is, is going through and looking at what do you want to track? What are the areas that you want to track? You know, if you're a writer, you know, how many scripts did I write or how many pages did I write? Or did I finish the book that I said I was going to do? Um, or even personally, you know, did, did I, you know, so did I lose the pounds that I said I was going to do, you know, I want to lose so many pounds this year. I, I say map it onto your personal life. I always say take whatever this stuff is in the industry that we're using, or in the business world and map it on, always map it on. So then go through and what's going to happen. First of all, Jennifer, Jennifer, is you're going to see how much you have accomplished, because we start in January and December, probably worse in December, beating ourselves up because of all the things we didn't get done. You know, oh, yeah. beat ourselves up. All the incompletions start to rear their ugly heads, right? Because we start beating ourselves up before we've even done, you know, tracked all those things for the 12 months. It's like anything, you know, that should have happened, Jennifer, this year. That should have happened, you yeah. know? And, and, and all those hopes that I had, that I, I was hoping that would happen, Jennifer, and it didn't happen. So we kind of take those, all those things that didn't happen, and then we drag them into the next year. We don't get complete with them. We literally drag them into the next year and then wonder why the next year looks exactly like the last year and the year before that and the year before that, right? Mm -hmm. So at least for now is take the 12 months, kind of look back and see what you have accomplished. What are those areas that you did accomplish? First of all, like I said, you're going to be shocked at how much you have accomplished. Secondly, you can look at the areas that you didn't and then get complete with that. You know, I said I was going to raise so much money for as an example for um, 
well, I was going to raise, say, $200,000 for my indie film to be shooting in the spring. That could be a, a thing you had this year. I didn't do it. I raised 50,000. First of all, acknowledge yourself for raising the 50 and I'll raise the other 150 next year. You know, so get complete with that. It's okay. We're our own worst critics. Don't beat yourself up. Just be complete and be complete is an ongoing thing. You know, it can, the next morning you may wake up and the little voice in your head, you didn't raise that other 150. You said you would and you didn't raise the other 150. So get complete because otherwise it would, another analogy actually would be like to paint on top of an, an existing painting. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to create something wonderful, Jennifer. And it's on top of something else. And that's kind of what we're doing is we're taking the year before and we're piling it on a pile of doodah <laughs> and wondering <laughs> why it smells so bad, you know, the next year. So I would recommend going through that. The other thing you're going to notice by doing that, by going through these last 12 months and literally tracking everything you've done and some of the things you haven't done is you're going to notice where you got stuck, the areas in which you got stuck. Usually we're unconscious to those areas. One of the actors years ago in one of my classes, she didn't even know she was stuck. We don't even know most of the time we're stuck. She started going back through and realizing that at the end of March, she had had an audition and the director was extremely rude to her, really rude. For the next three months, no auditions. And this is somebody who was having, oh, five, 10 auditions a week. I mean, this was a professional actress. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, no auditions for three months. She didn't even know that she had stopped, didn't even know she was stuck until that until she did that homework. And it just pointed it out glaringly. And now what she did is she went back and said, okay, you know what? I just need to be complete with that. That was still with one director and all the directors, uh, you know, it's like a grain of sand on, on the Santa Monica beach. You know, that's how tiny it is. One little thing happened in that whole career. So be complete wow. with that and then move on. Then the more complete she got as she went through the, you know, all of her 12 months, the more she was able to clean up the year, then we could start to move on. The next thing I want to point out is you will notice um, also where you're playing small. Because I find the more stuck we get when we're unconscious to it, and don't acknowledge it and don't get complete with it. And the more that we live in kind of the hope, well, you know, or shoulds, you know, then what happens is we start to um, play small and we start to blame. Well, it wasn't my fault, Jennifer. It's my agent's fault. They didn't send me out enough, or they didn't send my script out. Or was the investors, the investors weren't investing enough during COVID. So of course I couldn't raise the, the money. You know, then we start the blame game. And then that makes us play even further small. So that little tiny piece of homework is enough to, I think, really make an impact in terms of you completing the year 2021. The next thing I would say is then we create a story. You know, we kind of take that story I just told you about, oh, it's not fair, whatever. And then that story becomes a truth. And I think this is what, why I'm able to kind of be more successful in my career because I actually complete each year. Even if it was like this year, we were supposed to do a movie. Our John Lennon movie was supposed to happen this past year. We lost part of our funding and it didn't happen. Now, you know, was I complete with that? <laughs> no, I was pretty upset for a couple months. I have to be truly honest, I'm human. I, I, I held on to it, I was angry. You know, I kind of did all the things humans do, but I didn't have it last for very long. You know, I kind of tried to catch myself in the middle. I'm better at it now. You know, it takes years of practice. I'm better at it, I catch myself. Sometimes I can take an upset and turn it around in as little as 10 seconds. I call it my 10 second upset. You know, I really try to let go and forgive and complete as soon as possible. And that allows me the time and the, and the ability to move forward. Now from a blank slate, from a painting that where it's just a blank slate, now you can create design. And then that's what I do. Oh, I just, you know what? I just want to read you a little bit about how we create from the future. I, I want to say instead of the past, our life is given by the future we're living into. Why it looks the other way? Because we have the past in our future. Our future is usually about fixing, changing, improving, and perpetuating the past. And that's what we do. If we're not complete, we start fixing. Okay, well, if I get a better agent, maybe that's what it is, Jennifer. Then I can get more additions or then I can get whatever. You know, like we start fix, trying to fix things. The life that you have right now is given by and shaped by the future you've got. The future that you're living into will determine what your moment to moment, day by day life is like. So if you have a very little future, it will give you a certain kind of life. And most of us, for the way we're wired, our future is our past. So if we don't let go of that, if we don't complete, 
that's what's going to be happening. We're going to be living into a very little future. But I would say, you know, once you kind of get complete, do a one-year goal. By creating a one-year goal, you're kind of what I call putting your ass on the line and you're making a commitment, but from a clean slate. You know, by this time next year, let's say you are a new independent producer, um, I will be on location on my first, you know, SAG Ultra Low um, horror film in October. So if I'm going to run into you on the street and that's you talking and, you know, I'm going to say to you, oh, here is October, you know, are you on set with your, and then just, yes, you know, kind of thing, like have it be no matter what, that's your goal. So set that goal. And then the networking thing is really important to me. That's my other tip. I just did a mentor call today and, uh, and she was complaining about not having a lot of friends in the industry. I am a major, major, major I push like an addict when it comes to relationships. So I hope I gave a, a little tiny bit of a few little hints here and there of, of ways to kind of, you know, complete, you know, and then be able to have a bigger picture. And my, my, my commitment for everybody I meet, but everywhere is to have people live into the biggest future possible. That's yeah. who I'm about is I try to see people bigger than who they think they are. That's how my coach used to see me. You know, I used to argue with her because I wanted to play small. I would scream and yell at her to keep me small and she yeah. see me so much bigger than who I thought I was. And I lived into that future that she saw me to be. So I think it's very, very, very powerful. I've been teaching a class called launching the future for years. Wait, you have, you, you have a class. I try to do it. This is a terrible thing to say, but for selfish reasons, I do it because if I don't book a class, Jennifer, I don't do the homework. And if I don't do the homework, I don't get to be complete because the homework as you go through the past year. And I'm totally just kidding. I definitely know that Suzanne has a class because I took it last year. And oh, it was yes. <laughs> yeah, but I did. I, bu I booked another one because I said last year I wasn't going to do it. But then I got thinking, you know what? Because we had another COVID year kind of hovering around us. I think we all, I think it's essential <laughs> more so even than last year. I think I, I need it personally. So I thought if I book one, then I'll do the homework. As you know, I took the class last year yes. and, um, it, and it was a lot of homework, but it made me really have to analyze the past year. And I, I had to give myself a pat on the back because I thought, oh my God, I really did accomplish a lot last year. And it made me realize the stuff that I had to you know complete or just say, I'm done with this. Yeah. But um, I pulled up all like my notebooks and just tons and tons of stuff before no we way. did this call no and I was looking through everything. I was like, Oh God, you know, I'm sure I did not do that great this year. And, um, at, at the time when I took the class, I had a documentary that I was trying to find an investor for. And as okay. we know, that's the hardest part, you got to find yes. an investor. And then, um, I wanted to not only find the investor, but I wanted to complete my documentary within that same year, you know, cause yeah. I, time is, you don't want things to drag on for 10 years. And, um, I also wanted, um, uh, well, I did a personal goal of where I wanted a six pack abs, cool. and, uh, but anyways, I, I looked back as I was looking back on it, I go, Oh my God, I got an investor. I finished my doc. Wow. Oh, and I also had a goal to that I wanted to have the produced by title because I've never had that yet. Right. Well, I got the produced by title. Awesome. And um, and then I just realized um, I don't have a six pack abs yet, but I do have four pack. Awesome. Like, <laughs> like that, that whole thing sort of motivated me. And I just remembered one more thing too, because you you not only do the class, but then you do the Zooms every single week with everybody that was in the class. Yeah. So it's this sort of support system that's fabulous that you can tune into every week. That's right. And um, one of the, the classmates, because I had another goal actually of, um, of doing a master class for this. Oh. And one of the participants said, I will do your first master class for you. And that was Laura Brennan. No who way. Was there. The, the amazing log line queen, Laura Brennan. Yes. So. Yes. Log line queen. <laughs> yes. So, cool. so yes, I would highly suggest it. I'm going to do it again. And you get to be with Suzanne for a whole afternoon on a Saturday, which is amazing too, because Actually, just having yeah, access okay. to you. This one's going to be on a Sunday this time. Or Sunday. Okay. We booked it this time for Sunday. I know because we felt more, because more people were saying that there was Sunday was an easier day. For them so we are you know more free so we thought that and then like you said i think you said you, you mapped it onto your personal life too this time right you know and, yeah and oh you, yeah you were talking about your daughter you wanted your daughter oh. to be into a class into a special school or wonderful yes yes school. okay i i know you like you're you totally remembering i i had another goal because i was yeah. paying all this money for my daughter to be in a private school and i uh i was not living in a good school system at the time and i thought how can i get like the best public school but i don't want to pay all this money and um, anyways, this year I got her in as a transfer student 
to the number one school in Texas, but the number wow. nine whole country. Oh my God. Congratulations. So yeah, all the goals accomplished. <laughs> so fantastic. I'm, I'm so excited for next year because, you know, yeah. I'm just gonna put everything on there. Cool. That's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, me too. I know. It's so powerful. It's such a powerful distinction that we just never hear about in life. Nobody teaches this in university or college or in life in general. I mean, it's such an important distinction being complete. We drag our past along with us. It's amazing. We're not all just crawling along the ground. We're so exhausted from it all, all the years. <laughs> it's I, I know. I know. It's, it's amazing. I mean, the, the, the idea is so simple too. It's like, if you get rid of if you get rid of your couch because you hate your couch, right? Somehow a new couch is going to appear there. It's like physics, like the laws of physics. If there's something in the space, you can't put something there. But if the space is empty, there's room for something wonderful to come in there. It's the exact same thing. It's all like yep. probably science when you think of it, right? <laughs> so true. Oh yeah, no, it's yeah, yes. it's definitely a secret. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not keep the secret though. Let's share it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me and. Um, uh, Suzanne has been nice enough to offer Austin Entertainment Business, all entertainment business, a discount. So I'm going to post that on the main page of the website. So just go there and there'll be an easy click through to get all the information and the discount. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, because I think for, for you guys, I think it's, yeah, with the discount, as long as you register by the end of the year, I think it's like $75. So it's great. It's like a steal. You know, yeah. when I used to teach this class for businesses, it was 7,000 a day. So yeah, $75, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so yeah so thanks so much jennifer for having me and having me share about this i'm excited now i'm gonna go and do my homework <laughs> yes me too thank you so much for sharing you're welcome talk to you later suzanne okay thanks so much bye-bye